Hey everyone and welcome to episode 4 of My Retro Journey where this time around we'll be looking at my collection for the Sega Mega Drive. <laughs> Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Pixel Paul and welcome to episode 4 of My Retro Journey. So this series of videos has been a look back through the consoles that I've had throughout the years going all the way back from uh, my first Game Boy through to the Super Nintendo and NES so far. And this time around we're going to be taking a look at the Sega Mega Drive and the collection of games that I've got for this pretty amazing console. So, yeah, this is the Sega Mega Drive 2, of course. <clears throat> now, a quick disclaimer. This console is not actually mine. So, uh, this is actually my younger brother's. Um, we got this, or he got this, I should say. Um, I think it was the summer, the, sorry, Christmas of, I want to say 1993. So, that Christmas, I got uh, an NES, and my brother got this console. Um... He wasn't a massive gamer or anything like that, but he did used to play on on uh, the any the uh, the Super Nintendo and the Game Boy, um, and I think my dad uh, wanted to get him a, a sort of console of his ho his own that he could have in his bedroom, uh, and he got the Mega Drive, and it was the Mega Drive Two. Um, I was never a massive Sega fan back in the day, particularly. I was very much a Nintendo person, um, but yeah, the, the actual Mega Drive holds quite a you know it's quite nostalgic for me because i think because it wasn't my console um and i never actually owned a, a sega console um it kind of made playing it that little bit more memorable for some reason a little bit more sort of special i can i have very sort of vivid memories of playing certain mega drive games some of which i'll probably go into as we go through this collection um but yeah so it's a bit of a nostalgic console for me. I've, I've learned to appreciate it a lot more um, in sort of the last few years, really. Um, and there are some amazing games for, for this console. So, yeah, we don't have the box for this anymore, sadly. Um, and to my uh, younger brother, if you are watching this video, if you ever want this console back, then um, we'll talk about it sometime. Um, but yeah, so that's the console itself. So, as always, I'll go through the sort of collection of games that I've uh, got for the Mega Drive. Uh, some of these um, were from when we originally had the console. Uh, one or two I sort of collected back in the day when I had my uh, original console collection. <clears throat> and uh, there's quite a few, actually, which I've now built up um, and bought over the last year or two. So... I've actually purchased a couple this week as well, um, which kind of prompted me to do this video. So the first game that we got uh, for the Sega Mega Drive, uh, this came with the console itself, was Sonic the Hedgehog 2. So an absolutely classic game, sequel to the first Sonic the Hedgehog, which was great. But this sort of built on it in every sort of department, graphically, musically, gameplay wise. Um, Sonic 2 was just uh, an immense game. I would say probably, um, in my opinion, probably still the best 2D Sonic game there is. Um, I just think it pretty much was the, the sort of perfect Sonic game. Now, whilst I was never a massive sort of Sonic fan, I always preferred Mario. Um, again, like I said before, I've kind of come to appreciate these games a little bit more um, over the last few years. And um, yeah, I think Sonic 2... Uh, I would say Sonic 2 probably is in most people's top 10 Mega Drive games. I could be wrong, but let me know in the comments if I am. I think most people would say Sonic 2 is one of their favourite Sonic games. So let's have a quick look at Sonic 2 in action. Thank you. 
So that was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, arguably one of the Mega Drive's best games. So I will take you from now through the rest of this collection. Um, unlike my other consoles, I don't actually have any unboxed Mega Drive games. They're all boxed games. Um, varying conditions with some of them. Um, one in particular I'll show you, which is very weird. Um, some of them don't have manuals, some of them do. Um, but what I'll do is I'll take you through the ones that I picked up recently and prompted this video, really. Um, so I picked these up from... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Two of them were from CEX and one of them was from Cash Converters. So the first one I picked up was the Terminator and I have had a quick go of this and this is a game which is seriously difficult. Um, yeah, I, I've, I've played through the first kind of, sort of level um, and struggled through it um, but yeah it's a really tough game but I do love the Terminator, I love the movie, love most of the Terminator games as well um, although there are some fairly rotten Terminator games as well, but um, but this one seems alright. Um, the graphics are not too bad. The animation for the main character, Kyle Reese, is quite good, but the character, the animation for the Terminators and other characters is a, is a bit not quite as detailed, uh, which is a bit strange. And I have to say, Kyle Reese plays more like the Terminator in this game than the Terminators themselves, because he just seems to go along being able to shoot all the Terminators. Uh, with relative ease. I say that, but the game is still quite difficult. But uh, yeah, great addition. Love that front cover. Such a classic movie poster that as well, isn't it? The Terminator. So I picked that up for £15 from CEX. Um, that was only last weekend. Notice it was in stock, so fancy grabbing it to The Terminator. Next up, again from CEX. Uh, the box is a little bit rough and ready on this one, um, but actually it's it was the spine which sort of attracted me because I thought that looks really uh, quite sort of clean and crisp. And actually, the, the front cover is not great, but the, the rest of the box is all right, actually. Anyway, that's the that's the condition of it. It's Altered Beast, which, again, is kind of a bit of a uh, staple of the sort of Sega uh, back catalogue, if you like. Um, now, I've, always, I've played um, Altered Beast before. <clears throat> it's a fairly by the numbers kind of side scrolling beat em up type game um but it just has something about it that just sort of makes it more feel more of a classic kind of feel to it it was obviously an arcane game before it was released on the mega drive um it comes along with that uh, classic sound bar of welcome to your doom that was awful but um yeah as soon as you hear that you just think oh the nostalgia on this game is just immense and um you know, it's not actually that bad. I, I gave this a go the other uh, the other day, just after I'd bought it, and um, it's actually better than I remember it being. So um, yeah, I, I've quite enjoyed playing that one. Nice edition. Again, that was ten pounds uh, in CEX. So yeah, another nice pick up that one. <clears throat> so this next one, um, I actually picked this one up from Cash Converters, and it was one ninety nine. Uh, one ninety nine. Uh, the box is a bit rough and ready. It doesn't really close properly. <clears throat> now, the reason I bought this one um, was so back in when, when I was sort of like a you know younger uh, back in ninety sort of ninety three, um, probably a bit before that actually. Um, I used to play the Mega Drive quite a lot with my uh, younger cousin. Uh, he had a Mega Drive. I had a Super Nintendo. Um, whenever I used to go to around to his house, um, we used to play on the Mega Drive quite a lot. So I kind of remember a lot of the games that I used to play at his house uh, and there were a lot of sort of two-player games as well. So we used to play them um, quite often. Um, my cousin actually is not uh, is no longer with us, sadly. Um, so like I say, a lot of these games hold a lot of sort of memories uh, from my time at his house playing on his Mega Drive. <clears throat> so I really wanted to pick up this game because I knew it was one of the games that we used to play together uh, in two-player and it was NHLPA Hockey 93. Um, so when I saw this in Cash Converters the other day, I was after like a hockey game. So I wasn't 100% sure which version we played, but I had a feeling it must have been no sort of later than 95. Um, and it was just a case of whether it was 94 or 93. And I think more than likely it was 93. And having now played this, I think it is this game that we used to play together. So... Um, yeah, that's kind of the reason why I picked that up, because 
I'm not particularly a big ice hockey fan or anything like that, um, but uh, because of those memories I have of playing this round at his house uh, and playing two player, he was always a lot better at them than me. Um, he always used to beat me at this. Um, so um, yeah, uh, there's a couple other games in this collection as well, which uh, I remember we used to play together as well. So again, they have a lot of nostalgia, a lot of memories for me. Um, so yeah, that was a, a nice pickup and nice to find that the other day. NHLPA Hockey 93. It's in the game. <coughs> um, okay, so another sort of... Um, I think this was a, originally a um, exclusive for the Mega Drive. It did come onto the other consoles eventually, but initially I think it was a, a Mega Drive exclusive. And it's uh, Micro Machines. Brilliant game. Great in two-player again. Yeah, uh, I think you could play it in... Can you play it in four-player, I think? I'm sure it was a four-player game as well. No, just two-player. Um, but yeah, the, the Micro Machines games, they kind of disappeared a little bit in recent years. I think there is a, a PlayStation 4 version of Micro Machines, but it's not quite the same, I don't think. Um, I could be wrong, though. Um, but yeah, Micro Machines, again, that was another sort of massive release for the Mega Drive because it wasn't available on the sort of Super Nintendo at the time. Um, got really good reviews when it came out as well. There you go, 93% Games Master magazine. Remember that magazine? That was great. Um, so yeah, um, I had that. I've had this game since, I think we had this in our original collection. So yeah, this is one of the older games that we've got uh, in this pile. So uh, yeah, Micro Machines. <coughs> um, so this is the first one of um, the sort of blue spine, blue cover. Uh, Mega Drive games that I've got. Um, I originally played this game on a friend's, I want to say Amiga. It might not have been an Amiga, it might have been a comp, I don't know. Uh, I think it was an Amiga. Um, and when it came out on the, on the Mega Drive, um, I had to, to get it for the Mega Drive as well. And it is Cannon Fodder. So this is a, a very sort of British uh, game in a way. Um, as are a lot of these actually, because there's a few sort of Bitmap Brother games in here as well. So um, yeah, Cannon Fodder, brilliant game, very sort of dark humour to it. Um, so yeah, great game that one. If you've never played it, it's worth a look. Uh, next up, and I've not particularly put any of these in, in any particular order. So uh, next up, we're back to Sonic with Sonic the Hedgehog 1. So I actually played this um, after having played Sonic 2. Um, and um, yeah, I think once you've played Sonic 2, I don't know, Sonic Hedgehog 1 sort of feels a little bit, um, it's probably a bit harsh actually to say that because Sonic the Hedgehog, the original game, is you know still a classic but just Sonic 2 is just so good that uh, if you if you played 2 before 1, 1 probably feels a little bit um, not quite as good but uh, no, it's still, still a great game and I think the Master System version of this is actually, what was it, the Game Gear? It might be the Game Gear or the Master System, one of those versions is widely regarded to be even better than the Mega Drive version. So, um, but yeah, still, everybody should have that. If you've got a Mega Drive, you should have that in your collection, really. So, Sonic. Uh, next up, I've got um, a few kind of sports games, and these were all relatively sort of cheap pickups. Um, three of them, actually, I've got from car boot sales over the last uh, year or so, um, but all at sort of very sort of cheap prices. Um, so the first one is Super Kickoff. So I do like football, I do like football games. Uh, this isn't the best. Um, I think I picked it up for a couple of quid, this. Um, and it's in really nice condition, actually. This was nice and complete and really clean, really nice condition. So that, that was the reason why I picked it up. But um, I've ne I was never a big fan of the kickoff games. Um, I think I had a version of it on the Game Boy, which was rubbish. Um, I think I may have had this on the NES at one point. And that was rubbish as well. Yeah, I'm, I wasn't a massive fan of it, but it's quite nice to have it in your collection, um, just because you don't see them around that often. So uh, yeah, super kickoff. Um, I also then have FIFA ninety six. Um, again, got this really cheap. Um, I think I got this from Lee's Games in Morecambe actually, uh, and he was selling it so it was for a really sort of reasonable price, like three or four pound. A really clean box, nice and complete again. Um, love the the bigger cartridges that you used to get uh, the EA games 
uh, that used to, they used to come on. Um, but um, yeah, the reason I picked up 96 in particular is because it's got Jason McAteer on the front, who is a ex Bolton Wanderers player. So I had to pick that one up. Uh, but yeah, FIFA 96. Um, yeah, I actually like uh, the sort of old school FIFA games. I've got FIFA for the SNES as well. Um, but the Mega Drive is where FIFA sort of started off, if you like. And uh, yeah, you just can't beat FIFA on the uh, on the Mega Drive. So that's that one. And next up, again, this was a cheap um, pickup. I can't remember where I got this one from. It may even have been Lee's Games again, actually. Um, but and I don't like this sport at all. Um, but it was so cheap that I just thought, well, I'll grab it. Uh, it's Brian Lara 96, Brian Lara Cricket. Um, I've not played it yet. Not sure I ever will. Um, but I suppose, like I say, if my younger brother wants his Mega Drive back, um, he can always have that because he likes, well, he, he does like cricket, so uh, he might play that. Um, but yeah, it's a nice little sort of shelf filler for me in a way. Um, yeah, Brian Lara 96. Cricket. Phew. Right, so this one, when I mentioned earlier about having one game in particular where the condition of it was not brilliant this is the game and um, I still to this day don't quite know what they were doing with this but uh, it is and when you see it from the front you'll think it doesn't look that bad and it's sensible soccer so I got this from game station in Manchester and it was in a bargain bin a long long time ago um, in the galaxy far away known as the Arndale Centre and um, it was in a bargain bin at the same time they had a load of Dreamcast games. I think I've spoken about this before. They had a load of Dreamcast games in there for buy one, get one free. And I bought a whole pile of those. Um, and they also had a few sort of boxes of 16-bit um, games. So I remember buying a few NES cartridges in there, uh, some SNES cartridges. And they also had this. Um, so it was about probably 50p to a pound, something like that. Buy one, get one free. Um, so I had to pick it up because Sensible Soccer is such a, a great football game. I do like Sensible Soccer games. Um, and uh, it was only, there was no manual with it, just the cartridge and the cartridge is fine. Um, but the box was awful. So you'll see that the that's come away. But the interesting bit, and I don't still, I can't get my head around what they've done. But they, they cut this bit of the box, uh, box um, cover off. And they also cut that bit off there, which was, I'm presuming that was the barcode. So that's been snipped off and that bit was snipped off. And I just cannot fathom for what reason they would do that. It just still, the mind boggles as to why they would do that and for what reason they did that. I, I just, I don't know. Um, it's very weird, but it's a shame because otherwise that would have been a fairly decent copy of Sensible Soccer. Um, but yeah, has that, did anybody ever used to work in Game Station and they could answer that question of why they would do that? Very random, don't know. But yeah, Sensible Soccer, Mega Drive, brilliant game, great game. So moving on to uh, one of my favourite Mega Drive games. And again, I think I first played this on my friend's Amiga. I think it was the Amiga. I really genuinely can't remember. I think it was the Amiga. Uh, but yeah, I first played this on uh, his Amiga, and it is the Chaos Engine. Now this is a bit of a, a game from a time that time forgot. Um, it's never kind of been remade. Was there a sequel to this, the Chaos Engine 2? It kind of rings a bell, I'm not 100% sure, but um, as far as I know, it's never kind of been re-released or remade, or a bit like a lot of the Bitmap Brother games. You know they don't tend you don't tend to see them on any sort, sort of compilation discs or you know uh, back on on the digital storefronts or anything like that, um, which is a shame because it's a amazing game, really great game, uh, top down sort of shooter, almost like maze like levels, um, very much sort of the, has that bitmap brothers style graphics to it, the chunky kind of almost uh, steampunk kind of style wise graphics. Um, you can play as any of those six characters. They all have different, slightly different abilities. Um, but yeah, it's just a very good game. Amazing soundtrack to it. Very kind of like early 90s techno sort of vibe to it. 
um, which kind of goes well with the sort of steampunk uh, aesthetic, if you like. Um, yeah, it's quite a hard game to describe, so probably better if we have a quick look at the Chaos Engine in action. So that was the Chaos Engine, um, another one of my favourite Mega Drive games. So carrying on, next up is Super Thunderblade. Um, now I always get think this is a bit weird how they released a game on the Mega Drive that's called Super or starts with the word Super. Uh, it just felt like a bit of a I don't know marketing disaster. Um, but there you go, Super Thunderblade. Um, so basically a shoot 'em up a little bit along the lines of Afterburner but with a helicopter. Um, this is actually one of the cheapest Mega Drive games you can pick up these days. Um, and it's okay. It's not a bad game at all. Um, not one of my favourites personally, but um, love the fun cover for it though. Um, but yeah, Super Thunderblade. There's a few get Mega Drive games that have the Super title before them. Um, but there you go. That's uh, just the way it is. Uh, but yeah, Super Thunderblade. Not a bad game. Um, next up, and this is a bit of a classic, um, one of the games actually that is probably in the best condition that I've got. Um, again, I picked this up in a car boot sale not that long ago, and it is Lemmings. Um, so there is pretty much a version of Lemmings on phew, most uh, consoles uh, these days. All right, not not the sort of more modern consoles, but um, certainly there were, I know there was a PSP version, there's a Game Boy version. Uh, PlayStation version. Um, was there a PlayStation Two game even perhaps? Um, but yeah, there was. There was certainly sort of at one point in time, uh, Lemmings was everywhere, and it was kind of. I think for a bit, it was almost like considered to be the sort of second best puzzle game next to Tetris, and you can see why because it's uh, it's a very fun game, um, extraordinarily frustrating in the later levels, um, but yeah, very clever actually, clever game. Um, 
and uh, one yeah I quite enjoy playing that and picking it up again uh, not that long ago uh, so yeah lemmings uh, next up is Rolling Thunder 2 it's a Namco game so this was originally an arcade game I think back in I want to say 1990 something like that maybe um, sequel to the original Rolling Thunder which was also an arcade game um, but yeah I think this was an arcade game in about 1990 I want to say um, and this was a, a decent sort of port of that game uh, not my favourite game ever uh, it's a bit of a run and gun shooter um, but yeah it's alright and again, sort of quite a cheap game that you can get these days as well, that. So Rolling Thunder. Can't remember when or where I picked that one up, but I've had this one for quite a while, actually. Um, I didn't sell it from my original collection because I don't think it was actually worth that much, so that's why I ended up keeping hold of it. And I'm glad I did, actually. So, uh, yeah, Rolling Thunder 2. Next up is Zool. So, again, another game that kind of first... Um, appeared on like your home computer type uh, uh, computers. Um, again, I think I played this at my friend's house on his Amiga or whatever it was. Um, it was back when uh, everybody was trying to sort of out Mario Mario, trying to find that sort of new gimmicky character that they could uh, build a franchise on. Um, this was not necessarily the Mega Drive's version of it, but it certainly sort of maybe like the home computer kind of uh, attempt to, to find their little niche in the sort of 2D platformer market. Um, never really took off. Um, sort of a weird mix between Mario and Sonic in a way because the pace of it is quite quick and the character, the main character there, Zool, sort of moves quite quickly. Um, I think they were trying to go for like a cool sort of look to him um, but possibly just didn't have enough kind of character or personality to him. Um, but the game's all right. Um, it, the, the controls are a little bit um, not the most responsive, perhaps, um, which makes some of the levels quite tricky. There's a lot of sort of leaps of faith in it as well, so where you have to jump and you can't necessarily see where you're going. Um, but still, you know, the graphics are really kind of really nice and colourful. Some decent music in it, um, and it's yeah, it's nice to have it in the collection. Bit of a nostalgia trip on that one. Um, Zool. Uh, next up, and again, this was a bit of a sort of Mega Drive staple, this series to begin with. Uh, Desert Strike, EA Games, or EA Arts as they were known, Electronic Arts, sorry. Um, but yeah, Desert Strike, um, all of the sort of Desert Strike games found their home on the Mega Drive originally. Um, so this was the first game uh, set in the desert, obviously. Uh, there was then uh, Jungle Strike. Uh, and was it Nuclear Strike was the, the third one. Um, but yeah, good games. I like, quite like the, the Desert Strike games. Again, sort of picked that one up not that long ago from a car boot sale. So I've had quite a bit of luck from the car boot sales with Mega Drive games over the last year. Um, and that's really allowed me to sort of build this, this collection back up again. So um, yeah, Desert Strike. Uh, back with Sonic. And this one is a game... Um, some people really, really hate this game. Some people really sort of dislike it. Um, it's new. It's not a traditional sort of Sonic game. Um, I don't think it's that bad. Um, it's incredibly difficult. I don't think I've ever actually got past the first level or chapter. Um, I probably have done at some point. But um, yeah, it's uh, Sonic Spinball. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog in a pinball machine, essentially. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a difficult game. Um, but again, sort of not my favourite Sonic game particularly. Um, but I don't hate it or anything like that. Some people really dislike this game, um, which is a shame, really. Um, but yeah, Sonic Spinball, it does have its memorable moments. Some of the sounds and some of the music, obviously, with the Mega Drive. I mean, the music is one of the biggest things from the Mega Drive because there's so many memorable sort of tunes from games in, on the Mega Drive. Um, and I would include some of the songs in this game up there as well. But um, yeah, a lot of people don't like Sonic Spinball. Tell me what you think. Did you like it or not? So we're moving into the last few games that I've got for the Mega Drive. And I probably saved my three uh, favourites till last. So the first one uh, we'll have a look at is uh, World of Illusion with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. 
So again, um, this is a bit of a favourite of mine because again, I used to play this at my cousin's house. Uh, we used to play it in the two player and that is probably the best way to play this game. Uh, it's really good as a two player game, sort of a pla side scrolling platform game um, with co-op kind of uh, sections to it. Um, but yeah, just really uh, gorgeous sort of graphics in it, amazing sa uh, songs and some sort of sampled speech in there as well. Um, yeah, just a really great game. Um, I played the original, uh, was it uh, Castle of Illusion? And that's one game that I wouldn't mind adding back into the collection as well. Um, but of the two, yeah, this is what, this one was my favourite. Um, and let's have a quick look at World of Illusion in action. So that was World of Illusion with Mickey Mouse and Donald Duck. And one thing I probably should have done at the start of this video was warn you about my uh, exceptionally creaky and squeaky sounding D-pad on my Mega Drive controller. So you may have picked up on that during the sort of uh, video footage of the games. So if you can hear that noise, it's that's the actual D-pad on my Mega Drive pad making that racket. Um, I don't quite know how to fix that or whether I should just get a new Mega Drive pad. Um, so it's only a three button pad, so maybe I should pick up a, a six button Mega Drive pad at some point. Um, but yeah, the D-pad on that really makes a racket when you're moving it around. Um, and it does especially when you play this game. So this game is, uh, yeah, again, one of my favorite Mega Drive games. In fact, it's probably one of my favorite games of all time. Um, I would probably put this in my top 10 of all time. Although it's not necessarily my most favourite Mega Drive game, um, but this is one of my favourite games ever, uh, and it's Speedball 2. Um, so I love love this game. Um, I just think it's uh, such a great game. Um, if you've never played it, you really should give it a go. 
although it's not particularly available on much these days. Um, it's, again, it's another one of those games that's kind of disappeared into the ether, uh, sadly. But again, it's a, a bitmap brothers game. So like the Chaos Engine, it has those similar sort of chunky uh, graphics to them, instantly sort of recognisable throughout the bitmap brother games. Um, yeah, I really, I just love Speedball 2. Um, if you play it for any decent amount of time, you have to be careful with your thumb because your thumb is constantly moving on that D-pad. And it's probably playing this game that made that D-pad on my uh, controller, uh, you know, squeak and creak and make all that racket. So, um, th yeah, that game is probably to, to blame for that. Um, but, yeah, I do love this game. Excellent game. Um, I've had this uh, since my sort of original collection. Um, I didn't have this version with the original uh, games that we had with the Mega Drive, but yeah, certainly had this with my original sort of collection uh, and then re bought it uh, a year or two ago um, and had never regretted it. There was a PlayStation 1 version of this, uh, Speedball 2100, I think it was called, uh, which I've got up there, and that's not actually too bad. I always thought that was a bit rubbish. Uh, from reviews that came out back in the day and um, but I played it myself not that long ago um, And yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's it's just it's not that much different to this just sort of flashier graphics um, and uh, Different sort of interfaces with menu screens and um, so it's not massively different to it But yeah, the original is still the best version of it. So that's speedball 2 ice cream Okay so my last game, um, and I always pick kind of the game I remember the most um, as the, uh, on these videos. I, I sort of pick the, the, the game I remember the most and have the most sort of nostalgia for. I always leave them to last usually. So this isn't necessarily my favourite Mega Drive game, but it's just for some reason the game that I first think of uh, when I think of the Mega Drive, when I think of my Mega Drive collection, and when I think about uh, the games that I played back in the day. Um, Possibly a bit of an obscure choice, perhaps, um, but it's my my pick that I uh, I, I always remember, um, and it is Predator Two. Um, yeah, don't ask. It's <laughs> yeah, I know it's a weird choice, um, but I I really love uh, the original Predator movie. Um, although Predator Two wasn't quite as good a film, I still do like that film. I think it has its moments. Um, you can't beat the, the street confrontation between uh, the Predator and Voodoo Boss, King Willy, um, even though you don't actually ever see anything. Um, but um, this game, I mean, it doesn't massively tie in that well with the actual movie itself, um, but it's certainly very violent, it's very loud, um, there's a lot of sort of uh, mention of narcotics and drugs in this game. A lot of sort of weaponry, which you sort of see in the film as well. So it probably ties in better with the film than, than I actually remember in a way. Um, but it's done as a kind of um, sort of, sort of semi kind of isometric shooter. Um, you basically just go around playing as Danny Glover's character from the film, Har Lieutenant Harrigan, um, basically shooting and killing loads of um, you know, Colombian drug lords and uh, Jamaicans and anybody else that gets uh, caught in the crossfire. Um, but all the while, while you're moving through sort of each map, if you like, um, you are being stalked by the Predator and his uh, laser vision three dots, if you like. Uh, occasionally you will see the three dots appear on screen if you sort of hang around too, too, uh, too long in one place. In each level you have to rescue... Um, I don't know if they're hostages or victims or whatever, but you have to rescue certain people uh, through each level. But again, if you sort of hang around and don't walk over to them and sort of collect them, if the three, the, the laser sights, the three dots hover over that character, over that uh, hostage, um, the predator will effectively uh, use his plasma caster and blow them up uh, with one of the best special effects, uh, best uh, sound effects, sorry, um, probably ever used in a um, video game. Um, I have very dark humour, so um, if you hear it, which you probably will, because I think I'm going to show some footage of this, um, and I'll try and capture it on there, but it's it's just a weird sound effect, but it just has this weird uh, noise that comes along with it. So, um, yeah, Predator 2, that's probably the game that I sort of 
uh, remember the, the most about playing. Don't know really why, um, but I, I love it. Um, let's have a quick look at Predator 2 in action. So that is it, that is all of my Sega Mega Drive games, um, I'm still on the lookout uh, for certain Mega Drive games to put into the collection, um, off the top of my mind I still wouldn't mind picking up a copy of uh, Robocop vs Terminator, um, possibly Cool Spot, um, Castle of Illusion and I think the one game that I really need and, and should add into this collection is Streets of Rage 2. Um, now I've played Streets of Rage 2 on um, like the Sega Mega Drive collection on the PlayStation 3. I've also got this little mini handheld version of the Mega Drive uh, which you can plug into a TV and it actually has Streets of Rage 1 and 3 on it but it doesn't have Streets of Rage 2. So I haven't actually played uh, Streets of Rage 2 that much. Um, so I do think it's a game that I would love to add into this collection at some point so that is one that is on my hit list but overall I'm quite happy with the games that I've bought for the Mega Drive because you know, quite a few of them, you know, quite a few from that back catalogue of uh, Mega Drive games are starting to rise in price quite a little bit at the moment so um, I made quite sort of decent progress on rebuilding that collection a little bit so I'm quite happy with it. Um, so yeah I hope you've liked uh, that episode and um, I will be looking to do episode 5 uh, in the not too distant future uh, we will be moving on from the 16-bit era into the 64-bit era. Um, yes, I think that's where we will go next. Because um, that's the console that I got next. I won't tell you which one it is, but I'm sure you will be able to guess. Um, so yeah, I hope you've liked that video. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, if you can drop a subscription. And if you have liked the video, if you can give it a thumbs up. Always massively appreciated. As ever, thank you for pressing play. Thank you for following the channel and subscribing for all your support and all your comments. Really appreciate it. I'll see you on the next episode. Bye for now.